Hello and welcome to today's live class. We are we were actually discussing about the classification of organisms. We discussed about the kingdom Monera in last class. So today we are discussing about the next kingdom that is what kingdom Protista. And we will be discussing about the general characteristics of kingdom Protista. So what are the organisms that are included under the kingdom Protista? And we are again discussing about, yes, uh, important MCQs also are asked in different kind of uh, competitive exams. Okay, so let's start the kingdom Protista. So Kingdom Protista is actually a kingdom that consists of a large group of organisms and mostly they award single cell organisms, including such as organisms like protozoa, diet, some sirlina, slime molds, etc. Okay, so uh, so let's see Kingdom Protistas, what, what are their general characteristics? Protista, they include unicellular organisms. Some of them might be multicellular, but basically mostly they are what unicellulars. And one major thing is what they are now, eukaryotic organisms. Earlier in Kingdom Protista, they were the what prokaryotic organisms. Now Kingdom Protista is a eukaryotic organisms, meaning that they have got a true nucleus. They form the links with the plants, animals, and fungi. So also they are categorized like a plant-like, fungi-like, and animal-like protists. Protists are actually the connecting link between the lower or simple group of organisms, that is kingdom monera, and complex group of organisms, that is what, planty, animalia, and fungi. So they have a characteristics which is relatable with a planty, animalia, and fungi as along with what? different kind of a monitors. That's why they are considered as a what? Connecting link and are the important organisms of our biodiversity. Okay, so they are basically aquatic and are present in damp soil when we discuss their habits, yes. And they are mostly reproduced by a sexual means and they really reproduce by the sexual means of reproductions. They, they, some, of them might are, some of them might have a locomotory organs uh, for the moment, whereas some of them are what? Non-motile. So some locomotive by the help of a cilia, some by flagella, and some by what? Pseudopodia. We are going to discuss about each of them. So diatoms, euglena, amoeba, plasmodium, slime, mouse, these are the general examples that falls under the word kingdom protista. So now diatoms belongs to has one questions and the options are monera, planty, animalia, and protista. Yes, diatoms actually belongs to the what kingdom protista. So protista is the correct answer. This kind of a questions might be asked. So with the, with the examples, so you need to be clear about the different examples that falls under different organisms that fall under the what kingdom protista. Okay, so let's just carry on. Protista includes chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds, and protozoans. So in case of a protista, they basically include this group of uh, organisms. So now let's discuss, discuss about each of them individually and their general characteristics. So chrysophytes. So chrysophytes, they basically include diatoms and desmids. They are considered as a golden algae, yes. They are generally aquatic. So they might be freshwater, they might be marine. Cell wall is indestructible. One of the important characteristics usually asked in uh, MCQ's question. So indestructible kind of a cell wall that is because of the presence of a what? Silica, okay? Hard substance that is what? Silica. So they do not have a flagella. Organisms which have a, which do not have a flagella and has a indestructible cell wall, they are what? Chrysophytes. And they are, of course, they are microscopic and phytoplankton. We consider them as a plankton because they freely float with the current of a what? Waters. They are not actively swimming, rather they are moving with the wave uh, current of a what? Water. That's why they are considered as a what? Phytoplankton. And they do bear the chlorophyll pigment that is chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C. So uh, let's talk about that. We discussed that diatoms and desmids. So diatoms then basically have a cell walls that makes a two thin overlapping cells. Yes one fit on another's. You might have seen uh, one soap box. You have got a two uh, 
two overlapping cells over there yes one one the lid actually fits on the lower base okay so they and so diatoms are also like the same they consist of a two thin overlapping cells okay and they are the chief producers in the oceans we discussed that they consist of the pigment called chlorophyll a and chlorophyll c and as they consist of a pigment chlorophyll a and chlorophyll c they are the two are chief producers in the oceans they are reserved for material they store the food materials in the form of a what volutin granule Diatomaceous earth is deposit of a cell wall that gets acc accumulated. Actually, as we say that they have their shell wall is in the indestructible due to the deposition of a silica, and as they get uh, as they decomposed on the bottom of the ocean or any kind of a water bodies, they form a layer. Okay, and that layer for is considered as diatomaceous earth. Okay, and they are as they are what abrasive and that's why they are even used in what policing filtrations of oils and syrups and because of this diatomaceous earth as they lie down on the surface to the decomposition of a cell wall which is made up of a silica they can be even to, uh, used for what taking out the petroleum product due to the what more pressure and temperatures so when we discuss about the dinoflagellates, they are mostly marine and they are even photosynthetic. They appear in different colors, yellow, green, blue, or red, based on the main pigments on the cell. And cell wall, they consist of a stiff cellulose plates on what? Outer surface, okay? So as uh, basically cuticles we consider. So you, when you look at this picture, you can see there, there are the what? Uh, cellulose plates, okay? And these cellulose plates are actually making the, uh, making the organism stiff. Okay, and they consist of uh, they consist of a flagellum, two flagellum, because we need we we say them as a what dinoflagellates. Dino means two flagellates means what bearing flagella, so they bear two flagellum. That's why you can see in the pictures there is what one transverse flagellum and another is what longitudinal flagellum. Okay, so. They multiply very rapidly and toxins are released by such a large numbers and they can even chase the kill other marine animals such as what feces as because of their rapid multiplications with the release of a toxins they can be they are actually even able to kill the what other marine animals you might have heard about the PSP that is paralytic cell poisoning yes so that is actually caused to means that different feces selfies when they have those kind of uh, phytoplanktons those kind of uh, organisms uh, the same is again transferred into the what Anim animals or human beings after having that cell phase which is a kind of a biomagnification okay so the examples are goniolox and noctiluca yes red tides are seen on the surface of a sea red tides and red algae are the different things let's not get confused on the red tides and red algae they're not the same so you can see here in the pictures in the red tides you are seeing there they are grown on the surface of a seas. Those are the what goniolox, and this goniolox is a kind of a protist that fall under the what dinoflagellates. Okay. Similarly, one of the interesting organisms that is noctiluca, you might have seen it in many kind of uh, movies also. Those are bioluminescent as they releases the what light. Okay. So noctiluca fall under it also. So now let's discuss about the king and uh, let's discuss about the euglenoids okay so euglenoids they are mainly freshwater organisms and they're even found in the stagnant or still waters they are considered to be the connecting link between plants and animals yes and they have consist of a, their shell wall basically have a rich layer that is called as a what pellicle and flagella there are two types two flagella one is very short sometimes it is in very it is very short that it is even not easily distinguished yes and one other is one a long one and mode of nutrition is basically mixotrophic and when we say mixotrophic type of uh, nutrition that means what it includes both autotrophics and heterotrophs and when we say uh, mixotroph when they are lying on the surface layer of a water layer of the water and because of the photoreceptor cells because of the presence of this photoreceptor cells this they tries to move towards the what sunlight at that time they can form the what 
poor. They can form their own food and they become the autotrophic. But when they are at the bottom of the oceans, when they cannot sense the sunlight at that time, they cannot make the what food and they act as a what heterotrophs. Okay, so this is the basic pictures of a euglena. Yes, so they consist of a, you are seeing here only one flagella. I already said that another flagella, it is what sometimes in many of the cases they are almost entirely inside the cell also. So nucleus, nucleus, mitochondria, they are chloroplast, yes, because of the presence of this, they are able to make the food. So endoplasmic reticulum, photoreceptor cells. So now reserve food materials of euglena is collagen granules, paramylum bodies, stars, and glycogen. It is again one of the most frequently asked questions in many of the competitive exams. So volutin granules, we discussed this, uh, we discussed the, about the volutin granules in case of a what? Diatoms, chrysophytes. So stars, they don't form the stars, they don't store the food in form of a star, not even in form of a glycogen, they store the food in form of a what? Paramylum bodies. So the correct option is paramylum bodies. Okay, so now let's move on to the next group that is what? Slime mold. So when we are discussing about the slime molds, you're seeing the first letter that is a slime, which basically means something that is very slippery, yes. And they do have a body structure as a thallus. And on the on the above of this thallus, thallus or thalli grows the what different fruiting bodies. Okay. So they are slippery or slimy from where it got its name. That is what slime molds they grow on, there's decaying vegetations and are found common on the lawns and moist fields. They have a saprophytic mode of nutrition, so they go basically on the dead and decaying organisms. Similarly, plasma example, plasmodium is an aggregation of what? Slime mouse, okay? So now, protozoans. So they are unicellular, they are believed to be primitive relatives of animals. We say that some of them show the characteristics related to the plantae, some of them show the characteristics related to the animals. So we can consider um, protozoans as that type of a protist, which is a close primitive relative to the what? Animals. Okay, and they are basically heterotrophs, yes, because they are related to the animals. They are amoeboids, ciliates, sporozoa, flagella. So these are the different kind of a what protozoans. Okay, when we discuss about the amoeboid protozoans, uh, the basically if they are what amoeba in case of a uh, human being sick in in lying in the intestine and amoeba histolytica is causing a disease. We call it as a what amoebiasis. Similarly, flagellated protozoans, they consist of a flagella that is trypanosoma, which, which causes the disease of frequent slipping sickness. About the diseases, it will be more clear in other chapters related to the diseases. Ciliated protozoans include, that means they have a locomotory organ as a what? Cilia, those are what? Paramecium. And sporozoans means what? They bear the spores. We already said that sporozoans means what? They, they bear the spores, sporozoids, and that causes the disease that is what malaria okay and the causative agent is of course the what plasmodium so we will be discussing about kingdom next kingdom that is a kingdom fungi in our next live class i will be uploading live videos of different important lessons so continue to like comment and subscribe the channels hope to see you soon and stay safe thank you